Welcome to Hour 3 of the Nutrient Medical Report for Friday, uh, the Preparedness, Civil Defense, Earth Changes, and Space Weather Hour, with our preparedness expert and consultant, uh, former Special Forces Forensic Investigator John Moore, who has his own radio program, with co-host Ann Morrison, scientist, expert on earth changes, ultraviolet light in the upper atmosphere, volcanoes, sinkholes, earthquakes, and other earth changes, uh, and also tracking the issues of what's going on with the latest on the viral plagues that are ready to leap onto mankind from animal sources around the world, including SARS-2 beta coronavirus, H7N9, and H3N2V that's now acquiring lethal genes to uh, re-energize itself now two and a half months early. Uh, John, what's the latest on what you're hearing? And you mentioned earlier this morning a report you had from Lindsay Williams, who's often long-winded but often correct, unfortunately, uh, and uh, other sources you have, and what's going on, uh, and we'll hear John's report first. Okay, well, before we get to Lindsay Williams, there's an attorney uh, named Orly Tate. I'm sure you've heard of Orly. Yeah, we've had Orly on the program. She's very good. Uh, well, she's, she's done this, a- week, she, this week she's got hard evidence that a certain uh, Indonesian citizen uh, she's got a hold of the uh, college application for Occidental College of a certain Indonesian citizen applying for application to the college to be both a student and receive financial aid as a foreign student. Uh, right. That uh, foreign student, of course, from Indonesia being uh, Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, right. they, apparently his people neglected to, uh, to have that piece of evidence uh, covered up and uh, sealed. So she's right. able to get a hold of it. It's our first really hard evidence uh, than what uh, uh, our sheriff got down in our Arizona showing that the uh, uh, birth certificate was a uh, computer-generated forgery. Right. So uh, it's unlikely the House Judiciary Committee would do anything with it because they haven't acted in five years, and I doubt they'll do anything because they have no courage. But it's interesting, and the history books will be well served by her diligence, uh, Dr. Bill. I think uh, what's going to likely to happen is that uh, impeachment will start over the issue of him trying to start the war because I've heard from my latest reports that uh, that are now coming out that, uh, and this is basically a report that comes from Tim Alexander, uh, that apparently the Syrian uh, sends an inadequate chemical weapons report. U.S. and Russia plan is now indefinitely postponed. And, of course, Bashar al-Assad has stated that it'll take over a year to completely catalog the over 1,000 tons of materials and toxins they have, because they have the largest depot on Earth of biotoxins and chemicals. <clears throat> and um, he said it'll cost a billion dollars. The fact is that they do have these over a long period of time. They also have all the biopreparate weapons from Russia. They now have installed the S-300 system. They have the Yakant hypersonic cruise uh, missile, uh, the super cavitation torpedo, and the Alexander if there's an attack on Syria, it'll be devastating to our Air Force, devastating to our Navy, and we were going to get a what's called a military spanking by the conglomerate of Russian forces, uh, Pakistani nuclear forces, Iran, and other people, including Hezbollah, and all of our military bases in Middle, Age, in Middle East are going to be under weapons and air attack, which cannot be defended. Right. We are asking to get our butts whooped, and we're walking into a gang warfare where we're determined from this idiot in chief I call the abominator to make us a post-imperial power. It's no secret, and anybody who subscribes to Jane's publications uh, can easily find out the capabilities of the Russians' weapons and ours. Uh, for example, if, if the American countermeasures on these ships can stop 10 incoming, incoming missiles at the same time, then all the Russians need to do is fire 20 at the same time. Right. <laughs> and overwhelm these, these uh, defense me- measures. Getting right. back to uh, Lindsey Williams, uh, Lindsey Williams' latest video, which I forwarded to you this morning, Dr. Bill, he says that when uh, Obamacare is fully implemented, uh, which may be March of 2014, right. uh, that's when the uh, contrived economic collapse will take place. Right. Now, of course, you know that by 2017, DHS has stated that even though 19 states have voted against biometric IDs, that they plan on having full biometrics to all Americans, and this is moving forward in all first world nations on the earth, and now second world nations, even Uganda, is getting biometric on their citizens. So the idea is we're moving toward a system of biometric world currency control. The position right now is jockeying between Russia and China, who at least temporarily will pretend to play the game because they want their currencies publicly exchangeable rather than through special bilateral deals. So right now, for example, <clears throat> uh, China has got na- de- deals with nine nations, soon to be 11, including Australia and New Zealand, to exchange uh, between their currencies, the yuan 
and uh, goods and, and, and raw materials with New Zealand and Australia. Uh, it's a very strained relationship, especially since the uh, previous Prime Minister, and I think it will be picked up by this one, that the uh, Darwin Island facility for American military bases is going to expand dramatically, and Diego Garcia. So <clears throat> we're looking at a situation where all the parties are lining up, including uh, China and, and, and Japan, for World War III. Uh, we know that the most likely exchange is not between Israel and the surrounding Muslim nations, which don't have nuclear weapons except Saudi Arabia. I have that read from my IDF contacts. But the most likely exchange is between India and Pakistan because Pakistan's committed its nuclear weapons to defend Iran, and that's the ultimate target, not Syria. So uh, if this starts, India will exchange with, uh, with Pakistan. Uh, China will exchange with India. We will have nuclear weapons, which are, by the way, Chinese nuclear missiles, short-range nuclear missiles are in the jungle between uh, the southern border of Mexico and Guatemala, uh, in the jungle. <clears throat> They're also in uh, Venezuela with Russian weapons, and the Russians have sufficient weapons just in one ship on either coast, and they have many ships, submarines, seven times the volume and carry weight of our nuclear submarines, that just one ship will take every city in America, over 100,000 population, and turn into obsidian glass and everyone in them to dust. That sounds and people like George, don't get Washington's, this. George Washington's vision coming true, doesn't it? Right. And so I'll tell you, America is being prepared as an astral sacrifice to Satan, so is the state of Israel. And people don't get that. They don't understand that this is not greed, this is not power, this is evil. This is destruction of the human body, of the human spirit, of the destruction of the human soul, of civilization, and of any future humans living on the earth. That is what is in that balance right now. We had a, a woman at my meetup last night who grew up, uh, <clears throat> born and grew up in communist China, leaving communist China when she was in her 20s. It was very insightful to have this woman uh, doing her presentation and giving the details and the nuances of growing up and living in a godless atheist country uh, right. such as communist China, it's hearing firsthand the atrocities that her family experienced. For example, I'll, I'll give you one small example. Uh, the family dog was beaten to death in front of them, and the family was forced to barbecue and eat their own dog. Well, I'll tell you a story from my, my uh, sister's husband's family who swam across uh, Kowloon Bay to Hong Kong from uh, Shenzhen, and their family were all wealthy bankers in Shenzhen, and they took the entire family out to the, squ the town square and shot every one of them in the back of the head. Uh, and then uh, the, his, my, my sister's husband, uh, her mother, literally swam across the harbor uh, from the communists and saved uh, and literally had the, the, this child. Yeah. So that gives you an example of just how... It gives you an example of how bad this uh, situation is. Right. Communist yeah, China, by the way, uh, shows even on their shows how to barbecue fetus. And they've pulled out their, uh, their stops for <clears> the <throat> one-child policy, but they don't give them unconditional citizenship. So many women are coming to places like Chino, California, to have a baby so they can have at least American citizenship. So they're not coming here because they can't afford it. Oftentimes they're wealthy enough they can travel from China to America, but they're having illegal babies so they can get American citizenship because of the laws here. Right. Well, well Doctor, there's a community in, in California that is proudly announcing it's going to be flying the communist Chinese flag in front of City Hall. Really? Where, where's oh, yeah. that? Yes, I, I don't recall. It's, it's uh, in some of these alternative news sites. Right. Uh, I believe right. that before it's news. Right. Uh, yeah. what, what a horrendous thing to do, and, and shame on Well, all we have 50-some 50, uh, 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 sites that are called uh, trade zones from China. The largest one is 50 square miles in Idaho that the Idaho government should, uh, governor should actually be chained and put in prison for because this is basically sovereign Chinese territory as part of the deal. That's why over 90% of the oil in Iraq is not being used to spend to pay off the war debt from doing this war let alone all the families who have lost their sons and daughters and the people disabled. No, no, they get inferior care, no care at all. Uh, no, that oil through the Rothschilds went to China as part of the deal to continue the game of buying our debt and playing the world game called New World Order. That's what's going on. Absolutely. Welcome back, and, uh, and we have a couple of things to discuss. We want to start off with the pandemic flu. Uh, as I mentioned in previous shows, the only vision that I and my wife, Michelle, had seven years ago that occurred at identical times, 
I called her and tell her I was in the middle of a panic of having a standing back vision of, of smelling burning bodies and seeing them being stacked up and knew that a pandemic was coming. And, you know, people wonder, why do you have all these things like Nutridine, Silver 100, Allison Med ready? Why do you have a first line of defense kit? I remember first looking in 2003, that's 10 years ago, at my journals, and I saw a, a, an article by Dr. Osterholm, who is, by the way, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and is at the University of Madison, Wisconsin. He's considered the top virologist in flu in North America. And uh, he basically said a pandemic flu is coming. He was able to convince the United Nations to have virtually every nation on Earth sign the transfer of their military and their medical systems to the World Health Organization in the United Nations. So if a pandemic flu happens, your military is now New World Order military controlled by the United Nations and WHO. Your healthcare system is now under global control. You don't know that out there, but it's a fact. It's not something that's my opinion. It's just the way it is. And you can cross-check this and Google it and become a Google genius and find out the truth. And we have three candidate super viruses coming. And if you're not prepared for them and are not prepared to hunker down and not go outside so you're not an enemy combatant, you're going to get sick and very probably infect your family and die. So you need to face the music that the globalists are moving step by step to have plausible deniability to make sure that these viruses do get out. They don't prevent transfer and spread. They don't track the initial cases that arrive by airplane, or etc. And they're not going to do any measures to prevent the virus. And there is no possible vaccine that could save or stop people. We saw that in the movie Pandemic uh, here just uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Uh, people need to be aware that an airborne plague is coming probably maybe later this fall, but most likely in 2014, we're likely to see a major super plague uh, hit us. We're going to have multiple waves. It won't just hit in one wave, like 1918. The <clears throat> Asian flu struck multiple times between 1957 and 1968 over 11 years. But these viruses, H7 and 9, replicates faster than any other virus in history. It has the capacity to infect deep lung tissue very quickly. The SARS coronavirus if is it can be a minor infection in the upper respiratory, but if it gets to your lower respiratory tract, you have a 10% chance of survival if you get intensive care. And a large percentage of the people that survive have permanent neurological damage, permanent lung damage, and there are many of them are on dialysis for the rest of their life or a ventilator. This is not a party. You need to pay attention out there. And if you're a health care provider, you are, if you're a knucklehead doctor and think you know more than Dr. Deagle, have the nerve to call into the program and try to say your credentials and why you think this is not true. Because you healthcare providers are going to be the first with all proper reverse protection to die. You doctors, you nurses, your EMTs, you're going to pay attention right now or you're going to face the music that most of you are not going to be around here after these plagues hit. You're going to die first and hardest because you're not protected. Yeah, and what they've discovered with the H7N9, you know, that's the uh, <clears throat> bird flu virus that's coming out of China. And it's about, well, it's over 30% fatal. And um, it is it has a property that is absent in any other bird flu strain. And that is that the virus can stick to the lung and respiratory cell, yeah. cells and also to cells from the mucous membranes in the nose and throat. These are called right, yeah, epithelial go to the deep cells. Lung. So in other words, it, goes, it doesn't just go to the upper respiratory tract and then work its way down. It can go immediately to the lower lungs and put you in respiratory failure within 24 hours. Right, but the fact that this virus can affect the nose and throat <clears throat> will make it will make it uh, easy to transmit through coughing and sneezing. Right, and if it has a typical uh, incubation period of seven to ten days, it can spread to many co-hosts that will get the incubating uh, virus going while the other person is collapsing in the freeway. And what happens when you get a cytokine storm is you start getting what's called disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, uh, end up going to cardiogenic shock, seizures, hypoxic shock, uh, and and a DIC that causes bleeding from every orifice. So this is a B movie, but it's not a B movie. It's real. <clears throat> when this hits, this virus, H7N9, if it has these two genetic changes in just two amino acid positions, it will be the most deadly virus in history. Then we have a Absolutely. second candidate virus, H, the beta coronavirus 2, and this is going to make the SARS virus, the original one, look like a garden party. And then we have H1N1 transferring its lethal genes to H3N2V, which is the current flu virus that showed up two and a half months early. Why? We have no idea. But the virus is acquiring the lethal genes from H1N1, and if any of these recombine with each other, uh, the H3N2V, the H7N9, 
we're going to have a super virus that will have all the receptor binding domain, like a crossover between H3N2V and H7N9. And if they infect and co-host and create a new recombinant super virus, this is going to be a plague that will leap across nations and kill millions per week. And they have just discovered that there is person-to-person transmission in the MERS. That's the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. And it right. uh, has been documented. Now, they do think that they have a possible uh, treatment for it. And that they've been testing it on primates. And right. it shows that a combination of ribovirin and inferon alpha 2B stops well, the MERS. I'll ask, you, I'll ask you a couple of quick questions. First off, Chemotherapy. We had Dr. Moskovitz from the University of Washington in St. Louis, who is not only a, uh, a geneticist but a nephrologist and expert in infectious disease, and he recommended on this program four and a half, five years ago the idea of using chemotherapy to stop this uh, cytokine storm because you usually die from your own immune system reaction. Uh, these drugs, firstly, you're going to have a very limited supply. Number two, they're only going to partially control the virus, and if you don't catch it early enough, the viral load itself will trigger off a cytokine storm, and that's why you're going to get a cardiac arrhythmia and sudden death or DIC. So uh, the idea that's, that somehow we're going to be protected or they're going to make a vaccine is just wishful thinking. You need to have our antipathogenics on board now, taking them regularly. You need to have NIOSH masks. You need to be able to hunker down and not become an enemy combatant because when this virus hits, nobody's going to get gasoline. No one's going to get food. <clears throat> Anybody going out in the streets is asking for trouble. And after the fourth day, when people realize the federal government and Obama is not going to help them, they're going to freak out. You know, as Charles Salente says, when people lose everything, they lose it. Well, decent human beings can become pretty crazy when they're dehydrated, hungry, and they see their friends and family dying. Yeah, that <clears throat> movie Contagion that you referenced uh, yeah, showed Cajun, that. Yeah. Contagion, yeah. They, they showed that, uh, you know, when 30% of the people die, uh, you know, two-thirds of the people don't die, but, you know, everything stops. You have no public well, you, services. Yeah, well, you don't even need that much. I think if we had a similar death rate, say, three, 2 to 5%, that they did in the 1918 flu, but the uh, current rate of deaths from the uh, H7N9 is 18 times higher at least than the 1918 flu pandemic, and that will completely shut down civilization. Uh, the waves will take six to ten weeks to pass, and after they pass, they can come back with a new recombinant version that can strike people that were previously resistant or didn't get infected. So don't assume if it passes that you're, you're free and clear. The fact is that people will need to be wearing masks for months afterwards because it can come back at any time or recombine. That it can get into an animal population is now a vector, and those vectors can cause a recombination out in the wild and then come back to human beings months or years later. So. Once it's embedded, just like H5N1, H5N1 is out there. It's now in every bird population on Earth, on every continent except Antarctica. Your comments, Anne. Well, yeah, and although H7N9 is only in China at the moment, it's being studied around the world and could escape from a bio lab. Yeah, well, it's only a matter of time before China is a big business, uh, before it arrives here. Um, John, let's put on our, um, I'm not going to say crystal ball, because I don't believe in it. I believe in uh, that God gives us inspiration, and he gives us imagination, and he gives us, like uh, uh, Daniel, the prophet, uh, visions and dreams. And, of course, every day I do now these quantum resonant magnetic tests, and I hold the electrode and pray to God for me to act as a proxy. I actually experience the symptoms of the person that actually is calling me to ask for their help because they've got serious health problems, many of them are in extremis, which means they're on the way to dying, or they have serious chronic pain or major problems that conventional medicine is completely missed. He gives us dreams and visions. All believers, as it says in the time of the end, I shall pour up my spirit in all flesh. He's not talking about all flesh. He's talking about all my body, which is believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father in the flesh, Jesus Christ, otherwise known. And what he's saying is, we are at the time of the end. He said, no man knows the day or the hour. What he's telling you is, in fact, if you're a watchman or a watchwoman at the top of the tower with your shofar and you're ready to tell people the truth, even if it offends your relationships with your family and friends and ticks people off and you lose professional relationships and money, you have to, as it says in Jeremiah, the, the spirit of the truth burns in your bosom because you know their end is not only the destruction of your world, but the loss of human flesh and the burning 
desire for those souls cast into the abyss, fading into nothingness forever, called the death of the soul. The soul is not eternal. Unless it's married to the spirit of the Most High God, it is not eternal. And the, the, the death of the soul and the agitation of hell is what drives me and the love of the Most High God. Otherwise, I'm smart enough to go off and hide in the mountains and just say, you know, the end of the world is coming. I know all these things. To heck with everybody. But I can't. And I don't care about people's uh, abuse. And it, My love of humanity is not conditional on whether or not they care for me, like me, or whatever. In fact, I actually particularly like to tick people off because I find the worst thing is apathy. If I can make any violent emotion, whether it's love, hatred, agitation, uh, writing books that I'm the Antichrist or whatever, cursing at the people I bring on the program that are also experts like John Moore and Ann Morrison, that's fine. Because at some point you're going to wake up, hopefully not too late, so you've prepared yourself. Because when these things get rocking and rolling, and now it's becoming more and more evident that everything we said from Snowden's revelations to Mr. Putin stopping World War III, at least temporarily, to the about-to-be partitioning of the state of Israel promised January 13th by the abominator, the abominations that shall desolate, the false prophet that's now in the White House, the, uh, the Indonesian student that got a grant here pushed by Zygmunt Brzezinski and selected by the globalists to be the Messiah of Earth to separate the people and bring together Islam and Christianity. And now, of course, we've got a satanic pope that says, don't get yourself concerned in a knot over gays or abortion. I mean, da, this is the Pope saying this. Right. Come on, if you don't get if you don't get it, we're in the time in the end. I don't care if you don't believe in God. And the report I heard is eighty seven percent of people believe in God, ninety three percent of people believe in Satan, or otherwise known as the devil. And if you don't understand the immense dark majesty of the intelligence of this malevolent evil being, the first created most beautiful being that ever was created that went evil because of his narcissistic ego, and by the way, the guy in the White House is his narcissistic ego, but he's not brilliant we're in trouble, and the only thing that's going to save us is not even prepping prepping means we have a good intention toward each other and our fellow man what was going to save us is prayer and supplication to the Most High God to intervene, we need an intervention because right now it's not Mr. Putin that's going to save us, it's God. And we've got plagues coming, we get economic catastrophe coming, we've got Fukushima that's going nowhere. Nobody's doing a thing to fix it. You can protect yourself, but what if all the sea life dies? We're seeing sea lion, here I live in Kansas, San Diego, all last year, all bluefin tuna were radioactive. The seal pups from the, the sea lions are all dying. There, if you look at the number of sea lions, if you go down to Ensenada, you know, in, in the Baja, California, they're there. I was there in the last fall. I couldn't believe. It. Where's the sea lions? I said, Well, they're not here anymore. I said, like, What? Usually, there's so many sea lions when you get your ship pulled in there and you take a cruise, you're just like, mar, 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 mar. they're all over the place. It's like, where are they? They're dead. How about what happens when it's so dangerous you can't go surfing or you become radioactive? What happens when you get sores in your body from radiation illness? What happens when your teeth start to fall out like the Japanese? What happens if you continue to miscarry because you can't have a normal baby? What happens when the state finally says that they're going to outlaw wild pre reproduction and everybody has to carry a marker or chip on them in order to be able to buy or sell? What happens when you have a totalitarian state that takes and says bullets are dangerous to the environment, but we're going to let Fukushima go, so we're going to outlaw. You can have all the guns you want, but we're going to outlaw lead bullets, which is what Obama just did this week. He actually outlawed lead bullets with an executive order with the EPA. I mean, this is, if you said this to somebody, even said it to me a month ago, I'd say, come on, he wouldn't do that, would he? Yeah, he'd do it. What do you think, John? Well, how long lead bullets has been talked about periodically for about 20-something years. They've had some success outlawing, outlawing lead shot. Uh, there's some jurisdictions that they have to use steel shot, which is right. re really kind of an, a, a crazy thing, but they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, so far, they've been unsuccessful in outlawing lead bullets, and I hope they continue to be. Apparently, the uh, executive order was signed already, and it's about to be. Uh, he's trying to push it through, but I don't know how he's going to succeed. Uh, this guy is so full of hubris, he just tries stuff, just like trying to start World War Three at the behest of the bankers. And it's the only people like that Putin decided to say, no, we don't believe in Armageddon today. And, of course, the Russians have prophecies that it's the third Rome. That's what Red Square is, the third Rome. They believe that they're in prophecy, that they're going to, quote, uh, be a major power in the end of the age, and it will be, because I see the West, as I call the bride or the Babylon, the great, the harlot, 
I see Russia as the beast dictator because they have some of the most advanced weapons in history, and they can completely neutralize our military. So, which means the ultimately the beast dictator will be Russia and its affiliate nations, China and Islam. He's been declared the protector of Islam, but of course, you know, Mr. Putin is no friend of Islam. He's just using them. And uh, he's a uh, he's an Eastern Orthodox Christian, and he's uh, we've got a Muslim in our White House that's a Satanist, and we had an Eastern Orthodox Christian running Russia. Isn't that amazing? And he's trying to clear out things like homosexuality and these NGOs that are trying to destroy his country. Uh, Putin is a serious man. I don't think people realize what's going on. And uh, the, the Muslim nations that surround Israel, they're fully aware that there were nukes used in 9-11. And we had a discussion the other day with a gentleman from Bethlehem who was actually working work in our home. He's Muslim and an Arab from Bethlehem, Israel. And he completely knew that they used nukes in the World Trade Center. He knows about the Rothschilds. He knows about Putin and everything. He knows that Israel is a rogue nation basically acting as a phallic symbol or the penis of the dragon called America. America is not acting as a normal godly nation. You know, the, the crucible of Christianity, the I call it Ephraim, it is a dragon nation, an evil nation that's planning to literally crush any nation that crosses the New World Order. We are the golem of the globalist bankers. That's what we are. Well, pretty bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> tell yeah, us what you really continue. think, doctor. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm holding back now. I'm holding back. Go ahead, John. <laughs> okay, holding back. <laughs> well, we're in for a wild ride, regardless. Uh, people need to uh, keep in mind the basics of uh, spiritual preparedness and physical preparedness. They have a plan A and a plan B. Uh, yeah. The only thing we know is uh, there will be no uh, any plan will quickly come to an end once the shooting starts. Uh, that's well known in, in combat as well as just as it is in football. Uh, right. So have your contingency plans in place, get your training, get your spiritual life squared away, and uh, remember basic skills, uh, life-saving skills, communication skills, the skills to defend your family, uh, grow a garden and so forth. Uh, the skills can't be taken away from you. You can lose everything else, but you still have your skills. Exactly. I tell people, number one, I have a water. You can have a well or you can have a roof water collection system. You have to filter the water because you can assume that somewhere, whether it's Fukushima or the Middle East, there's going to be a nuclear war that will poison the air. Number two, make sure that you realize that you need to filter the water because most groundwater in America is contaminated. With arsenic, heavy metals in places like the northeast of the United States, uranium, it's all over the northeast. I recently did a test and got tests on someone who actually sent it off to Genova Labs. And they had high levels of uranium. I said, I wonder how that happened. I said, where do you live? And I said, oh, I live here. I said, well, I've done consults for people for years from there in the northeast of the United States. And it's very ancient. There's tons of uranium in the water supply. People don't know that. Same as Boulder, Colorado. The highest, most radioactive water in the western United States is Boulder. The pristine environment of Boulder, Colorado. Right. And the highest level of, of radon daughters. You want radon? How about 4,000 parts per million plus? Boulder, mm-hmm. Colorado. Mm-hmm. Nasty. Now they have oil in the water. Welcome back. And um, John, you have some information. You have a uh, analysis uh, rebuking the climate change, uh, global warming garbage. And Anne, you mentioned that the Ison comet now can be seen with astron- with even homemade uh, astronomies. I have a telescope. We measure early in the morning. You can see it when Mars is in the sky because it's approaching Mars. Uh, John, tell us about your uh, paper and these p- principles because we now know the new Prime Minister of Australia has rebuked and called it uh, a, a load of crap, otherwise known as gastrocolonic inertial syndrome, that's, which is all these enviromaniacs have. Uh, give us your analysis. Well, it's not an article I wrote. It's written by uh, credentialed scientists, and uh, right. it's been difficult for these men and women who are, in fact, credentialed scientists to to go public for any number of reasons. Uh, it could be harmful for their career. They could have funding cut off. But uh, this particular article uh, does uh, have these men and women coming forward and saying there is not consensus among credentialed scientists as to human activity causing uh, climate change. It, it's something that's uh, very important. Uh, I've been uh, forwarding this to people that from my website for quite a while, uh, and it's important for people to understand that there is not, uh, not even close to 
uh, consensus among credential scientists in their chosen fields that uh, climate change has anything to do at all with, with human activity. In yeah. fact, uh, at, at the Greenland ice sheet, the ice is melting from the bottom, not from the top. Right. And the reason why it's moderate from the bottom, the Gekal Range is 1,500-kilometer long range as high as the Swiss Alps. It was 22,000 venting mid-oceanic ridges with temperatures of 740 degrees roughly, melting from the bottom, like when you boil a pot of water. And there's increased ultraviolet light also causing minimal melting at the top, like the Greenland ice sheet after it put these particles and bombed over Greenland last year. Uh, what's happening is we're heading into a modern type ice age. When I heard Will Thomas, who's been on this program before, he's not an environmentalist, he's a journalist. And he made the statement that we're having a release of methane hydrates that are showing up in the Arctic and that the polar bears are dying because they can't get an ice flow. So it's a pile of garbage. This is the fact. We are releasing methane hydrates and there's under oceanic volcanism occurring because the heavy approach of, the red, of a red dwarf star that's in deep space coming in, probably twice the distance of Jupiter. We have Ison Comet and other hyperliptical comets coming into the inner solar system that are pushed in by this object that never approached the inner solar system. Uh, Ison in the next two months will be 16 times brighter than the moon. It can be now viewed in the early morning. These comets, including the NERC trial, which is coming up, will be November 13, 14. Uh, the outgoing director of DHS, Napolitano, stated that it's a 100% certainty that we will lose power control due to a coronal mass ejection caused by the sun and, quote, cyber terrorism. Well, we only have cyber terrorism if you attack Iran or China because they're the main groups that are going to have cyber terrorist armies of technicians that can attack us from another country or Russia. So the fact is what they're doing is are you trying to use a natural event and amplify it so they can get further control of the population. We are at very grave risk of a CME not just then but for weeks and months afterward increased solar storm activity uh, and they know this, and they're not hardening the grid yet, but they're going to do a grid trial, which we know when they did Chernobyl, that was a trial a day before a holiday where they didn't have all the technicians on staff. They made a few, a few wrong switches, and they caused a meltdown called Chernobyl. These idiots are going to do the same kind of garbage, not just here, but across Canada, the United States, and Mexico, which could lose large chunks of our power grid and cause a power blackout, not because of a CME, but because of a... Uh, you know, a <laughs> stupid government moves to test the grid, which is not properly integrated or hardened. This is dumb. And, right, here's, uh, here's the full title of this article. It's uh, titled Climate Change Reconsidered 2011 Interim Report. Uh, it comes from the Science and Environmental Policy Project Center for the Study of Carbon Dioxide and Global Change up in uh, Chicago, Illinois. Um, so it, it does bear looking into, and, and people need to inform yeah. themselves. Yeah. Yeah, no, what's happening, we're more likely, and this is by experts like Dr. Tim Ball and other experts, Dr. Habibil Mazatov from the Russian Space Agency, Dr. Easterbrook uh, from Britain, and other experts around the world who met two years ago, June, it's two, now, two years ago, June, and stated very clearly by 2014 we'll be in the full grip of an ongoing start of a monitor type ice age that will last around 2074, 2075. The Chinese have confirmed this, the Russians have confirmed it, the international scientists, and yet idiots like Obama don't want us to be energy independent, don't want to end up with you know cleaning up the pollution from using energy, don't want to release tier one science for other alternative technologies, because if we have UV shock, we won't be able to convert carbon dioxide back into oxygen, so the world oxygen level will drop, and the only way you'll be able to live is if you have an oxygen concentrator or a home with it sealed so you can actually concentrate oxygen or produce it chemically or with plants so you have enough oxygen to breathe so you kind of can live. Uh, we are moving toward an eco-catastrophe caused by bad policy and stupid humans. Dr. Bill, uh, when I said something come up here, I, I've got a, a, a repairman just arrived, so I need to sign off. Yeah, yeah well, that's good. Listen, uh, John, I really appreciate your reports, uh, and uh, thanks. And, we'll, and, of course, you're going to be hosting the program next week with Ann Morrison, and... Uh, and I want you to kind of uh, return on the virus issues because I think that people don't grasp just how immediate this disaster could be. Next month with the Hajj, we have these returning viruses, Corona beta virus. This could strike us very, very quickly. It's right at the time where they're going to do this NERC trial. It's at the time when the bond market is still playing games with Bernanke and, and pumping up the markets. Obamacare comes in, and of course, according to uh, Lindsey Williams from John's report, uh, he's talking about March from his globalist contacts. 
I think that this is a contrived collapse of the world economy to try to bring a whole new financial order in and to bring in China and Russia to agree to the policies and plans for their world exchange and control of their centrally controlled economies. Russia and China don't want that. China has been resisting for decades, which is why they have a, a communist-controlled economy, the same as Russia. The two main countries besides Cuba that don't have Rothschild banks are Syria and Iran, the main targets of this current war. This is the final war before the false peace treaty and the mark of the beast. If they, a peace treaty comes out of this after a period of destruction, just back from the edge of Armageddon, then this peace treaty, which of course has to be the Herodian Temple, can only be built with the order of the U.S. president as given to the George Bush called the Scroll of Bush in 2007 by the Sanhedrin in Zafet, north of the Sea of Gennesaret or Sea of Galilee. We're almost certain in the second term of Obama to see the peace treaty the setting up of the sacrifice and the partitioning of the state of Israel. We have all these things moving to our biometric world currency system, which DHS has said is going to happen by 2017. What do you think of the sequence of events? Well, I think that the uh, <clears throat> the most telling case right now is going to be biological war- warfare. Yeah, you exactly. Know, it's going to, it's Airborne play will shut it down tighter than a nuclear war, won't it? It will, and it's going to affect everybody. It's not just going to be an isolated oh, yeah, area. Yeah. Right, and, and it, with a relatively small military force, you can control a large population because they'll agree that without, quote, some kind of external controls or friend or foe chip, given if you, quote, take a vaccine or get screened or whatever by the controlling powers, which will be then under the control of the World Health Organization and the United Nations, who will now control our military and our health care system, that's law. It's been signed by every country, including the United States, an airborne plague is the next major event to happen, I believe, besides the now, collapse we, of the economy. I want to remind you of the H7N7 uh, virus. H7N9. That, no, yeah, H7. no I, this is yet another one. This oh, is yeah, H7. I heard the H7N7. Yeah, that's another one that's out there, too, isn't it? Yeah, it closed, down, yeah it closed down uh, poultry shipping in Arkansas to uh, ah. China and Japan and to two states. I think it was Mississippi and Georgia. I think Mississippi and Georgia are now taking a poultry from Arkansas. Now, does that, anyway, that doesn't, is that just a poultry virus? It doesn't have the human receptor binding genes yet. Well, though, right? that's what I want to tell you. Now coming out of Italy, there were three cases of the H7N7 in the, human, in the humans. And the, they had what the, the, the leading, the first thing they noticed was they had conjunctivitis. In other words, when they woke up in the morning, they couldn't open their eyelids because they were kind of glued together. Ooh, big eye. Yeah. yeah. So if you get that conjunctivitis, you probably got a case of H7N7. And start and, stocking uh, they, in on the Silver 100, Allison Med, and Neutrodyne, and Immunomax, and Power C Plus to stop a cytokine storm. Get this stuff now, people. Uh, if you start demanding that we ship it, like when we had that pandemic thing three years ago, we got so swamped. We were just going crazy, pulling our hair out, trying to get enough shipped here and ship it out to people. If you have a true full-force pandemic, we're not going to be able to supply you. We're just a relatively small company. You need to order it now so we can get it in, get the inventory up, and get it out to you. Because when it hits, whether it's next month or next year, as they say in preparedness, better to be a day early I'm sorry, a year early than a day late. If you don't have it, I'm not going to say God help you, because he already is helping you. You've listened to this program, you know what to do, just do it. See, it's easy to get Neutrodyne, Allison Med, NIOSH N95 masks. Get yourself prepared, people, because they're ready to do it. They're going to pull the plug on the economy. They're going to spread an airborne plague. This is the next 9-11 false flag that's coming. The NERC trial is coming this November 13th, 14th. And they're ready. They're ready to do it. 